on Vegan Friday. I'm Karen Griffiths and I have uh, Simon in the kitchen on camera today. It's a terrible twosome again. Hi Simon. Hi Karen. <laughs> Are we ready for a fun-filled Friday? Yes. 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 Jolly good. I didn't realise you were asking me that. I thought you were asking, <laughs> thought you were asking the general audience, you know. <laughs> Simon's going to be on comments today, so as always, if any of you lovely ladies and viewers out there can help that, if he is on his super duper camera work, if you could answer any questions that might arise, if not, don't worry, I do go through this video later and I'll try to answer as many questions as I possibly can for you. What Simon's going to do is utmost, aren't you Simon? Yeah, and I'm also going to come to bed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, thank you. See my hair now, thanks. <laughs> I'm trying to get in to get it cool. We're still socially distanced, though. <laughs> right. Well, while we just a uh, few hellos off Simon, if we're waiting for everybody to catch up us up, and I'm going to be um, making. I'm going to try and. Uh, He's doing both things at once, yes. bless him. So, are you alright on that camera? While I'm absolutely I, fine. While I try to navigate your um, iPad. We've got some <laughs> lovely, no, look no. at that. I've got some lovely um, chocolate Oreo biscuits in there, which I'm going to be using our, our mould that's on the website. It's our unicorn, whoops, again, unicorn cookie mould. I'll be using that. So I'll be showing you that in a bit. Put that to one side. I'm also going to be making some lovely vegan chocolates and somebody said yesterday I saw I must admit when I made them I thought the same thing they look like those coffee capsules that you put in your machines and I must admit the thought had crossed my mind when I made them but it was a mold that I got from Amazon because remember all the chocolate molds we use on here we don't actually stop where uh, I just buy I, I just buy a variety from Amazon so I've got this lovely um it is like a, a it's like a, a geo a geo effect on it so I'll be showing you that again in a moment. Well, the, the good, glad to have you back because they missed you on. on oh, on Monday when it was the. Um, missed you on Monday. On Monday. It, yeah, because we because it was. Um, who was it? It was um, Jerry. Jerry, but you're not going to get me this Monday either, are you? But, but you're back on I'm Tuesday. I'm back on Tuesday. I'm doing Tuesday and Wednesday at half eleven. Uh, first is going to be Tracy Mann, and then Friday it's me back for me Vegan Fridays. So for the next few weeks, guys, you're going to have me. If we've got no classes on 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 those days, you're going to have me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. You're going to have a Karen overload. So we're going to be doing some lovely baking and next week I've got some delicious uh, whipping it up treats ready to go out. I've got, I'm, I'm Halloween based next week, I've got all these things going through my head so we're going to have a, a real good time on Tuesday. Right, I'm just going to show you, if someone can go to the overhead for me. I will do that, yes. Right, so in this box here, I've done it as a little gift box here, we've got the vegan and chocolate caramel slab, and I'll just bring a little piece up now, and it has the pretzels on it, and it also has some of the, um, the Calibo crisp pearls on it. I mean, these are optional, you don't have to put them on, but I just thought it looked good, and it's a, a gorgeous, it's a homemade caramel with um, the pretzels, and it's on a lovely dark chocolate base. So we're going to be making that. What are you laughing at now? I'm laughing at what Gerald Geraldine Allen's just said, that uh, don't give me too many treats to eat. <laughs> as I'm watching my figure for the 2021 calendar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he'd, he'd look all right as a big Santa in the December, won't he? <laughs> we'll keep feeding him treats and it will be okay for big Santa because his beard's getting that colour, so he'll be fine. <laughs> so here on the overhead again, this, these are the... Um, the unicorn, these are Oreo biscuits, uh, Oreo cookies inside the dark chocolate. And I don't know if you can quite see, I'm trying to, go, trying to see that, you can't quite see the unicorn, it's a gorgeous, if I bring the mould in, you can see the mould, you've got an um, embellishment there on the top, it's a, a lovely uh, unicorn mould. So when you put your chocolate in, you get a 3D unicorn effect on top of your chocolates. Now you can paint these if you wanted to, or you can dust them. I'm also going to be making vegan caramel cups. Now these are really soft and uh, delicious inside, which if I get my little, just trying to get something here, just to, I'm just thinking if I can cut one open for you now. I'll just do it on this little pink mat here. 
So I'm not cutting on a pink board, I'm actually cutting on a pink mat. And I'm just going to get rid of the chocolates out and I'm just going to get a sharp knife. Geraldine, I can still wear a Santa hat, can't I? <laughs> so here we go, I'm just going to cut this down now just to show you how nice the caramel is inside. Look at that. That is, I'm going to bring it up. That's a proper caramel cup. Just look at how delicious. And it's not coming out, so it's all nice and stable. They've been in watch the fridge. She, um, oh, watch, watch me, she, watch, 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 watch me, watch me positioning. Yeah. So you can see that gorgeous caramel in there. It's nice and gooey, uh, but it's stable inside the cup. So I'm going to be making the caramel with you on the live now. And I think Simon needs that one because he wants to take it out of the way for me. You can eat that one. <laughs> he can only eat soft things. He can't eat crunchy things because of his, um, his, his poorly mouth with having his wisdom tooth out. So I'm just going to bob these these gorgeous treats out of the way. I say we sell the macron boxes as well, which are great for um, for putting your treats in and what perfect presents they are to give out as well. So you've got the, the brown one and we've got the red one and you can line them with tissue paper and they just store the treats beautifully and they're great. Imagine that with a little bow around it and some ribbon. Be a lovely little treat. Put these out of the way. This is my caramel now I made this yesterday and I will advise that it is very so it's very sticky as well it's very thin when you first make it so if you are going to make the um, the vegan um, you're going to make the caramel and chocolate slab and you're also going to make the chocolates make this caramel the day before or at least a good 12 hours before because it, once it's gone it's cooled and you put it in the fridge it goes to a lovely soft caramel consistency. I don't know if you can see that from the side. Um, I'm just going to show you from the side. Can you go to the side a moment for uh, the, the front camera moment for me? So, you see, as you can see, it's a nice, soft, gooey caramel. Um, I really would advise, make it the day before, absolutely. And once it's gone, uh, you leave it for 10 minutes in the pan to cool down, then put into a bowl, just pop it in the fridge for 24 hours and you've got the right consistency caramel. Otherwise, you might find it too thin going inside the chocolates and I don't know if it would harden up inside the chocolates. I've not tried it. I also didn't want it too hot because it would melt the chocolate shells. And I'm going to put this into a piping bag and I'll pipe that into the chocolate shells because it'll be less messy than trying to spoon it in. So we'll make the caramel first. As I said, that's one thing that you, I'd like you to make and just make it 24 hours in advance. So you need to get your pan. I don't know if Simon's got any, he can see this now. And I'm putting this on the heat. I want to warm, just warm the pan up. Now you are going to be surprised when I say this. The recipes are on the website. <laughs> <laughs> I've done them this morning. So you can actually look for vegan chocolate and caramel cups and vegan chocolate and caramel slab. And the caramel recipe is on there, and so is everything else that you need to know how to make them. So I was, um, I was a bit ahead of myself today. So you've got to make sure the pan's just warming through. I can feel the heat from the pan there. That's absolutely fine. And into that, I'm actually going to put 75 grams of light brown sugar. Now I have sifted this only because... Um, I found out if I didn't sieve it, I was left with some, some some little hard bits of sugar that don't melt down. And I didn't want anything crunchy in the caramel. I want it to be a nice, soft, smooth caramel. So I would advise, once you've got your light brown sugar, just sift it. Because you just get about five or six quite hard, um, like, canes of sugar at the... In the left, it's like canes grains it's, cause sugar, it's a proper sugar cane, you know, so you're getting quite hard lumps at the end. But only about, I only had about five or six. So, sugar sugar into the pan and I'm just going to cook this sugar through just for a minute or two just to warm the sugar up while that's just warming through I'm going to measure out 200 grams of coconut milk now you can buy this from most supermarkets I've got one from the Quarp here but I have bought it from Asda and I bought it from Morrison's from Quarp <laughs> from Co-op <laughs> so uh, this you see the thick white on the top this is the mo this is what I really do want to go into the caramel. I'm going to measure out 200 grams. I 
what's that? Can I, can I? This is coconut milk. Oh, that's okay. Pure vegan co- is, is it, coconut milk is vegan, but it's, it's got it on vegan and vegetarian. I don't know if it's gluten free. So. Yeah, why would you put gluten in it? Well, that's uh, it. Must be gluten free. It doesn't say it's on the tin. Usually, it says it on the tin, doesn't it? So I've got two hundred gram, and that's the full fat coconut milk. The sugar's warming through nicely. I don't want it to burn and it's not going to melt. I just want it to warm through and I want the pan to be nice and warm. And because I wanted, a, to, uh, I wanted a, like a salted caramel taste, it's, it is a hint of taste there. But what I've used is, um, I've used 75 grams as well of our natural flavoured um, salted caramel icing sugar uh, but don't put that in straight away I found if I put that in once everything started to melt it dissolves a lot better so that's warming through now I'm going to pour in the coconut milk well that's like a proper cooking show that isn't it Simon like a proper cooking show like a proper cooking show I mean you hear the sizzle you see him on Sunday brunch and that and you hear it all so I'm just going to carry on stirring this round now as you can see, it's got the, it's got some of the coconut milk there, but as it starts to warm, it all does start to melt. Oops. It's a different types of coconut milk. There is a low fat coconut. I did notice there was a, there was a coconut. The lady says her last coconut milk was really watery. Yes, I I think it depends. This one's from. This says it's Thai coconut milk, and I must admit, uh, if you go to the bottom there. It has got some, there is some um, clear liquid at the bottom there. So I just, I didn't shake the can. I just made sure I took the, the thick white off the top. If you shook it all, it probably would go a bit more water because there's the actual coconut, the clear coconut liquid at the bottom. Can you see it, Simon, just at the very yeah, bottom? Yeah, this has got the emulsifier and stabiliser in it. So which just going to thicken it. And yeah, well, it makes a gorgeous caramel. So that has now melted down and you can see the steam off it, it's starting to heat. So I'm going to put in the icing sugar a little bit at a time and make sure it's all dissolving nice. I found this it works better because the icing sugar dissolves without leaving any um, like gritty bits if you've overcooked caramel. I wanted to put it in a little bit at a time. And with it being hot now, it's dissolving. Can you use something else instead of coconut milk? I'm sure you could. What would you recommend? Well, you, if you didn't want... For vegan, vegan they do suggest coconut milk for vegan. I haven't seen anything that doesn't use coconut milk when I was looking at vegan caramel. But if you wanted to use a normal caramel, we have a normal caramel recipe on our website if you were, if you were not making a vegan one. So I'm just going to get my wooden spoon now and do some stirring. And this will stir down nice. And I just want to put this one on to, I'm putting this other ring on here to a simmer heat because once it starts to boil and bubble, I want to simmer it for 15 minutes. Now one thing with this um, caramel is, once it's simmered for 15 minutes, you will see it will change in colour slightly, but it also will appear to still be quite thin. It will coat the back of your spoon or your spatula, and you know it's cooked then, but it looks thin. It thickens up as it cools down and thickens up overnight. That is why I do suggest you do wait 24 hours before you use it. And as you can see, that's coming to a nice boil now. So I've brought that to the boil, I stir around for a minute. If you wanted to, you also could add, if you wanted to make it more sea salty, you could also add a good pinch of um, a sea salt, put about a half a teaspoon of sea salt in there. If you wanted to make it more of a salted caramel. 
I just like the flavour of our icing sugar in with it because it was complemented the chocolate beautifully. So that's bubbled nicely, so I am going to take that off now and I'm going to simmer that on this ring for 15 minutes and I'm just going to keep giving it a stir. I'm turning it right down. So I'm going to leave that there for 15 minutes. I'm just going to keep giving it a nice stir every now and then because I'm not standing there for 15 minutes where it just... It does say in the recipe, you don't have to, um... You can make me move the camera now, aren't you? No. I was looking at the comments there, and you, <laughs> you moved it. You moved the pan. Well, I have to go to my simmer, my simmer ring. It's not like gas when you can turn it straight down to have a simmer straight away. Oh, no. Electric rings don't, don't cool down that quick. So I'm going to leave that there now with the spoon in it, and I'm just going to leave that. Just gently, I've got it on like number one and a half, just simmering around. So, Geraldine's asking about your apron. Is it the one with the frill on the bottom? Oh, Geraldine, you know I have a double frill. You're not the cat, are you? <laughs> Remember to look at it. <laughs> you, I was looking, you know I like the double frill. It's Me and Nikki have got the double frill. Look at that. And I wasn't being, I, I didn't want to make you jealous the other day, but it is so princessy like. Look at that. <laughs> And I've got a nice little pocket in it as well. Look at that lovely little heart shaped pocket in it. I'm going to clean the board down now. So, the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to pretend that our caramel's been made and it's been in the fridge for 24 hours. We're going to melt down our calibo chocolate. And I've got 340 grams of the calibo, and I'm using the 811 recipe. This is just the dark, the dark palettes. And it's the 811, and this is, as you know, it is suitable for vegans and vegetarians. And it says it there, and it's gluten free. So we're going to use that one, and again, we're going to melt this down now, but I'll, it says melt it down, it's actually plugged in the, uh, plugged the microwave in, that will help, wouldn't it, Simon? There we go. You could have just. Oh. Yeah, sorry. And I'm going to do it in 30 second bursts. You don't want to melt it completely down in the microwave because you have that chance of burning your chocolate. So you do it in 30 second bursts and I found that after the third burst, so it's like 90 seconds, you've still got some whole callots in there. Uh, but you, you're just going to melt them down by just paddling and, and stirring the mixture and the melted chocolate will melt everything down then and then you haven't overburnt your chocolate. There's nothing worse than chocolate that's got a bit of a burnt taste to it. As you can see, 30 seconds, they're still... They're warm, but they're not... haven't melted. So I'm just going to uh, put a tea towel... I'm just going to put a cloth down there because I'm a nice wet cloth only because I don't want to burn the bowl because the bowl gets quite hot so once this is done then it's a nice and if you give it a nice good stir uh, while it's um, the carrots are milking you will get that nice shine to your chocolate cups then but I also am going to dust some of the cups and leave some plain we're going to be using the fake Hay Hill Luster Dust as you can see it started to melt so, because the bottom now is uh, looking like it's melting, another 30 seconds. Now I have my tin prepared. I've just got the oblong brownie tin there and I've lined it with some uh, baking parchment, greaseproof paper. And that's so I can pour the chocolate in and we're going to then set the chocolate in the fridge. It doesn't take that long to set because it's quite a thin layer. Here we go, we're coming up to the last bit now. Now, you, depending on your microwave, you might need to do it again. Now, that's had... Yeah, I'm just going to do that. That's had 90 seconds. But I am just going to give that another 20 seconds. So you could make this with milk chocolate, couldn't you? But Absolutely. It, but the kind of milk chocolate is not... It's vegan. not vegan, not no. Vegan. This is why I use the 811 on vegan fries, because it's the actual vegan chocolate. But if I was doing these like at home for my family, because my family loves milk chocolate, I would use the, uh, the 823 recipe. And you also can make them, they'll be delicious with white chocolate as well. Because the white chocolate with the caramel and still with the pretzels in, and you can make white, cho white chocolate caramel cups. Yeah, very nearly. So we've got a few seconds left to go. Here we go. So 
going to show you that I've left some of the, uh, the callets in there, I've left some of them the whole, and we're going to give it a really good stir now until everything melts and it's nice and smooth. You can do this on a bay marie method if you wanted to on the stove, if you were doing it on a saucepan of hot water. As you can see, I don't know if Sam can go, yeah, I've got some whole callots in there, anything Sam can go to the overhead for me. I have got some whole callots in there, you can see that I've got all the lumps. I'm now just going to stir this around now with my spatula until it's all melted. Now if you have using your pink board, make sure you do put a cloth down because the bottom of this bowl is quite hot. So I've got it on a nice damp cloth so that I'm not going to mark the pink board. Because we know how precious they are. As that's melted down quite quickly there and the bowl is quite hot, I'm just going to put in just a few, just sprinkle a few in there just to cool the chocolate down quicker and it will still melt but it will cool the chocolate down and it will give it that nice sheen. You want to make sure this is all nice and smooth. And like Nikki with the blue dust, I'm standing away because I don't want chocolate on my apron. Because poor Nikki, I think I don't know if Nikki's watching. When um, Jerry was doing, when uh, Carol was doing the the class on Wednesday, Nikki dropped a full pot of uh, blue dust on the floor. She said, "But it got her oak flooring, but missed her apron." I said, "That's the main thing. It missed your apron." So as you can see, that's nearly melting down now. It just just take a bit of stirring round. They will melt. But I just wanted to make sure it had cooled down. I don't want it too hot. And it also, if you cool it down using some more little pellets, it does give it that nice sheen to your chocolate. There we go. Now you do pour most of this into the tray, but do make sure you save yourselves around about three tablespoonfuls just to pop into a piping bag um, or, to, or to use a, a spoon just to drizzle over the top of your chocolate slab. Because that then just, uh, it just nicely holds all the pretzels and the, and the crisp pearls in there as well. And looks pretty. So that's lovely and smooth now. Good morning, Marie Burton. Thank you for getting up early to watch us. Oh, Marie, where is she? Is she She's in the US? In so the US. Oh, so it's five to six there. Good the morning, morning, Marie. Has Wayne joined us yet? Because Wayne usually gets up early as well, doesn't he? Oh no, Wayne is Wayne Australia. Is he? Is it evening for Wayne? I think Wayne's Australia. Right here we go. So that's all nice and melted. I've got a lovely shine. I don't know if you can see that. On the overhead there, we've got a lovely shine on the chocolate. You see that lovely, lovely shine to it. I'm going to pour most of this into my bowl, but I am going to, oops, bring that so you can see me do it. Bring that here, but I am going to save some in the bottom of the bowl. I only want about three tablespoons, so there we go, a bit more. And then I'm just going to spread that out all along the base. You just want it nice and even. So the nice thing to do with that one then is, when you get that, give your hands a bit of a wipe. And I found Make sure the corners are out there with off. I'm just giving it a shake and it just flattens the chocolate out which is really nice. Don't know if you can see that Simon now that it's um that's all evened out really nice. There's no ridges in there so I've got a lovely flat base there. So I'm gonna pop that whoops I'm gonna pop that into the fridge.
melting, I'm just going to put the rest of the chocolate into a piping bag because I can warm the piping bag back up in the microwave and because I just want this bowl again to melt some chocolate for the chocolate cups. chocolate just don't go together at all you've not shown the pumpkin yet so don't panic no i'm gonna i'm gonna do that now just want, that shortly helen so i do i just want to get all this chocolate out of this bowl well, i think we're, we're catching a glimpse of it in the background yeah well we? i'm gonna bring it over and show it yeah it's absolutely amazing yin has done a fantastic job on it so just wipe all that up um, i'm gonna wipe the side of my bowl because it's got full of chocolate and then I just want to melt a bit of chocolate down for the chocolate cups. There we go. Get the chocolate off me. I've got my chocolate bag, which that's ready now to pour on the top in a bit. So I can, once this is in the bag now, I'm not going to cut the bottom, but I can just uh, leave that in the bag. There we go, leave that in the bag, put on there, and that'll be ready for doing into the pretzel and the calabros in a moment. There we go, so that. let's get rid of that one and have that one back. So that's 200 grams of calabro chocolate. Again, I'm going to do a 30 seconds blast of that. So while that's the first 30 seconds on there, I didn't even get my apron, I don't know how good that was. <laughs> so what's going on in the pan at the moment? In the pan, I'm just keeping stirring it. I'm just going to actually go to, it's simmering. It's simmering for 15 minutes. Giving it a good stir. And still see, I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. I think I've simmered it a bit too uh, too low, but it is simmering lovely that. There we go. Because once it coats the back of, like, it's not quite coating the back of my wooden spoon yet. So that's when you know when it's ready, it's when it coats the back of your wooden spoon. It could take longer than 15 minutes because I'm actually using it on a little um, like camping stove. So I've just turned it up a little bit just to get a bit more heat to it. There we go. So I'm just going to show you this gorgeous pumpkin that Yin's done. Look, I'm going to, um, I've got two tea lights underneath there. <laughs> so uh, Tony took some gorgeous pictures before in the, we, we, we uh, made the kitchen. Give it, a, give it a twirl. I'm going to twirl it and I'm just going to show you here where she, uh, we've got the proper sugar and crumbs font, got a lovely bat. The cut, it's the bat wing coming out the cupcake and then if I go this way look look at the whip we've got the sugar and crumbs whip they're whipping it up whip and it's got fangs on it like a little bat and bat wings we've got some hearts on it and look at the back there the bat's got sugar and crumbs on it with all bats all flying round um I don't know if it will work, Sam, if we just turn one, that, you know the one lot of lights behind you? What? If we just turn the lights off. You won't be able to see it, I don't think. I don't. Just it's, an ex, it's an experiment. It's an experiment. Let's just see if we can... Uh... If you can just turn the lights off. I don't know if you can see can you it. Can get it balanced? Yeah, of course yes. I can. Of course I can. There we go. Yeah. Okay, I have to apologise, we're going into darkness. We're going into darkness, but we'll be back again. Well, there we go. No, okay, <laughs> turn it back on again. No, we can't do it. I want you to see, but Tony has took some amazing pictures and the pumpkins that we managed to make the kitchen really dark. And uh, we've got the camera going and we've got some lovely pictures of it all lit up. And we're going to do an Instagram story later and she's going to get these pictures on the website for you to see. So all I can say is, oh, well done, Yin. This is absolutely Amazing. You're going to need like a, like a, a hundred 
candles in there to make it <laughs> on, on the TV. <laughs> on the TV, yeah. So there we go. So I'm just going to blow those out, put that on there, because that's going to go back in the fridge. A light bulb, maybe. Maybe a light bulb, yes. <laughs> so let's put it on there behind us, because you can all see that. What a work of art. It's absolutely amazing. Just put a lot of effort into that. So I'm just going to turn the microwave on again. That is only had 30 seconds for those pallets. Let's just uh, check this. No, it's not quite coating the back of my spoon yet, so I'm just actually, I think that, that, that one is a very, it's a good simmering ring that, but it's simmering too, too low. So I've just turned it up a little bit. This is nice and set. So I am going to pour on some of the caramel, making sure that I'm saving some for the chocolates as well. It's nice and gooey. And you just spread it across. You just want to cover all the bottom of your chocolate. I'm just going to pour a little bit more on there because I just seem a bit mean with the caramel there. You're laughing at now. Geraldine said they've made they, all these lies of lives have made them very lazy. <laughs> she just wants to sit on a box and watch the thing, watch, watch us making things rather than making them herself. Good, 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 good. Well, I've got some really good Halloween -y treats coming up next week, on, on especially on Tuesday. There we go. So I've got the lovely caramel going across there. Now, you could put more on if you want, but I just want to save a bit. For um, my chocolates, I only made one. I've only made one batch, uh, but it's like one and a half batches. And then I'm just going to. I've got my pretzels. I'm just going to break each pretzel in half. We're and not you, doing our job, are we? If we're not inspiring people to get off their books and go I, and make things. I, well, we are because I know that when people watch these lives, they then go off and they and they all want to go and make things. And so that that's the best bit. So you're just breaking these pretzels into half. It's thirty grams of pretzels I've got. It doesn't matter if some go into a few pieces. grams of the Calibo crisp pearls and I'm going to put those on. You could always put some more chocolate chunks or if you wanted to you could put marshmallows on there if you wanted to. You can put any topping because these are salted caramel crisp pearls and these are beautiful and you get such a lot in the bag and they go such a long way they'll last you for ages and you can use them on top of all your desserts and uh, all your little sweet treats you do even on top of your cakes they're brilliant. There we go so we've got some of the pearls of oops don't to lose any there we go then my chocolate is still nice and my chocolate's still nice and soft there so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the very end of the bag off just a tiny snipping and make sure you know where it's gone it's gone on top of the scissors I'm watching it and then I'm just going to just drizzle Lush. Look at that. So there we go, we've got enough chocolate on there now. And then that is just going to go in the fridge to set. 
and I'll be able to show you that by the end of this show. There we go. So I'll put that back in the fridge. In fact, it might take a bit. Sam, could you put it in that fridge for me, please? Thank you. This yeah, that's been brilliant. It's so same as keep going off screen, doesn't it? That's great. Thank you. So let's check the chocolate. Let me just check. Oh, we're getting. It's getting thicker. This. It is going thicker. So I'm just going to get the back of this spoon here. Where did the other spoon go? The other spoon's over there. Remember my figure. <laughs> <laughs> Who's saying that? You also. Geraldine again. <laughs> So that's starting. I'm going to give that a couple more minutes because it's just starting Hi, to Wayne. coat. Hi, Wayne. I was wondering where you were. So there we go. I'm just going to give that a few more minutes only because it's just coating the back of the, uh, the wooden spoon now. Let's check the calibre here. It's not as warm that bog up. I've been talking and left it in the microwave. So I'm just going to give that 10 seconds because I can cool it down with some more <coughs> pallets. Just give it 10 seconds, that's all I need. some of the, uh, the the hard carrots in there and I can just give this a really good stir round now just to get them all melted nice and soft now don't forget if you want to learn how to do chocolate properly to show all the all the techniques we've got Ollie's class on Monday and he's doing the chocolate handbag class which is going to be a superb class I don't know if any of you ladies are on that class I know Jane is and um, I think I don't know if Nikki's on it uh, but I know people can't wait to do this chocolate handbag and he's gonna be doing all kinds of tricks with it and showing you how to make it into a really good gift to get to give to somebody if we can fill it I think he's doing chocolate truffles so if you can there's still time to get on that and that's only a 30 pound class if you're looking for something to do and you're feeling at a loss, a bit of a loss, then get on Ollie's class. I'll be there doing the comments. I don't know if uh, I don't know who's on camera. Is it you, Simon? Or is I it don't Tony? know either. <laughs> We're going to discuss that um, after this show. I'll be definitely there. I'm on comments. So if so, if you're not on that class, it's a really good class to get on. It's a chocolate handbag. Is, is that going to make a difference to people whether they watch? No. If, if I'm on camera or not, no. not, if I'm on camera, they're not going to watch it. No, I think if, you, if you're on camera, they're going to watch it. In fact, you, they love you and both you and Tony, you both do really good work. Right, that's lovely and melted now. I didn't need to put any more carrots into that because I can feel that. It's just it touched my hand there. It's uh, cool enough and I've managed to melt all the carrots down into there. I've got a good sheen on the chocolate. And I'm going to paint this onto the mould. I'm just going to check, check the caramel. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour it onto, see what it. It is practically there. It's coating that a little bit. In fact, it's coat. Our YouTube viewers are very quiet today. They are, aren't they? They're not so Just a thing. To... Is anybody watching on YouTube? Just say hello. Are we on YouTube, Simon? Of course we're on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd check with you. Are we on YouTube? Just going to get the back of this spoon here. This metal spoon to see whether it coats the back of this metal spoon. Nearly. <laughs> it's just, it's still, it's coating. But it's just starting to drop off a little bit. So that is only a couple of minutes off being ready. Because you can see I've still got it on the back of the spoon. But not quite as thick 
as I would like it. So I will just leave that there. I'm just going to turn it up a little bit. I can see it's getting a little bit thicker now, but it won't. It'll still look like oh, a liquid. Yes, we've got one. <laughs> Hello, Karen. Is it somebody called, not saying hello Karen to me, is it, is it Karen who's watching, is it? Karen Mikalef, I think that's how you pronounce it, apologies if I've got it wrong. Now you can paint these using a brush, but what I found yesterday very handy was I just put a bit of chocolate into a piping bag and I piped a little bit in and then I could use the brush to brush up the mould and I just found it that little bit less messy. And a little bit, it, it just helped coat. I'm just going to just put that much in because you don't need to put too much in at first. You don't want your bags to be overloaded. So I just keep bobbing me head in the caramel. I'm not making sure the caramel's still all right there. So I've got a piece of lace like that there. And Karen's in Malta. Hello, Karen. So again, I've just cut off a very tiny piece there and I just want to put into the bottom of the mould, I'm just going over covering the first circle because this geo mould, I'm just covering the first, the first little bit, like the first layer because I'm going to paint it up the sides. So I'm actually just going to the first, the first uh, bit of the gold. Vanessa. Vanessa. Look, they're, all, they're all there. Oh, we've got loads on YouTube, they're haven't all, we? Yeah, they're all coming through now. Oh, brilliant. This one's a bit, a bit mean. Uh, Debbie would like to bob her head in that caramel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're there. We're there. We're there. I'm sure that's so. Uh, It'd be, it'd burn, idea. it'd burn, oh. it'd burn. And so, you might suffocate in it as well. <laughs> With a paintbrush, I don't know if Sam can get so, the overhead. No, we, don't, we don't recommend that. Sam, can you get the overhead a bit for me? A bit, yeah. Well, a, a lot. Bit, a bit. <laughs> and I'm just using a paintbrush just to paint up the sides, as I want all the sides covered. And I do suggest that, I do advise we do two coats, just so that we've got a nice... Um, evenly covered shell that with that no caramel will seep out of and the two coats always tends to work a little bit better than just doing one coat because you are going to seal the bottom with chocolate as well and these these take don't take very long in the microwave at all in the fridge at all, I don't know, because I was looking, I, I, for some reason, my eye caught the microwave then. <laughs> just... putting, the, putting things in the microwave on defrost is not the same as putting them in the fridge. It's not the, quite... the opposite, in fact. <laughs> yeah, not quite. Doing these quick because I can hear my caramel. Using a paintbrush is a lot better than using the back of a spoon or a palette knife. It does tend to brush up all the mould and you get all the little bits covered. So I'm just going to have a quick look. That's pretty much covered. I can see a little bit of uh, terracotta down there from the outside. So I know they're a bit too thin. I'm going to put these in the fridge just for five minutes just to harden up slightly. And then we can get them back out and give them a second coat. Right, let's check this caramel pan stand. There we go. And that, and we can see on the overhead there, it's not quite. It's not. It's not a liquid, but it's not thick. Nice stir of it. So it's not caramel. It is it's caramel, but it's not a liquid. It is, but it's not a very thin watery liquid, and it is coating the back of the wooden spoon. And it's not falling off there. So it is coating it nice. I've got a nice coating there. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave this cooling for 10 minutes in the pan before I transfer it to uh, a dish. So we can turn that off and that's off. Move that over there out of the way a bit. There we go. And I do want to melt some more chocolate. And I'm just, just waiting for the, the cups won't be that long. Um, I want to show you how to do these lovely ones as well. So I have got some chocolate in here. So I'm going to use this chocolate as well while I'm waiting for the other chocolate. I'm filling the bottom of the unicorn. So, Paula, if, you, if you're not vegan and you want to make this and you don't have coconut milk, you can use milk. Or cream? No, or just just look at. Milk no, it's not. It's um, it's actually if you want to make the ordinary caramel and you don't want to use the vegan milk, you actually go to our recipe page and we have a, an easy caramel sauce on there, which is water and granulated sugar and water, and then once that is all melted down without stirring the pan, you put in in cream and uh, butter, and that makes you caramel. That that it's. Uh, but look on our website. We've got so, an easy caramel sauce on the website. So there is a non-vegan one. Yes. For people who are so I'm just vegetarians and not vegans. So all I'm doing is I'm just banging this down so that I know that the unicorn is covered inside. I don't know. Make sure that, that there we go. Got to get another piping bag. There they are. And pour some more chocolate because we'll melt some more chocolate for the uh, for the caramels. Just thought while I was waiting for the shells to set, I could just show you these ones. And these are great you can do these ones um you can do them in a plain oreo cookie mold that you can get off i get all my molds off amazon as i've said and you can put in oreo cookie mold and you can get a plain one that you can luster dust up if you wanted to you could they're great for play settings at christmas or parties or if you just want an extra treat these are great because they've got the unicorns on them so you could actually paint the unicorns or luster dust them up if you wanted to so i'm just going to there. Let's melt some more chocolate. Remember, any chocolate that's left over, you can um, eat. No, you can put it into a Ziploc bag and uh, when it's gone, just put it into a Ziploc bag, cool it down and you can just store it in your cupboard. You can just remelt it. It's absolutely great. It just doesn't go off. Eat what you like, you. So just going to snip that off again, just a little bit there. There we go. A bit more chocolate. Not a lot. I just want to put a little bit more down so it's a bit deeper before I put the cookies in. Right. Just make sure that waddle that round. Make sure that that's all covered. There we go got the Oreo cookies here. And take one in the centre and just press it down. There we go. And I'm just going to cover the top of the tops. I did need some more chocolate, so I'll just give those a shake. Oh, Karen. Got that one done. Yes, I know, but I want to show these lovely viewers everything that I do. So I've just got a little bit more chocolate in here. 
No, we'll just... you not know, spread that out? Go no. No, because we don't want to be tight. We don't want to be to be mean on the chocolate front, do we? If you're going to eat chocolate, we're going to we, we want a, a, a nice a nice bite, like the old fashioned club biscuits used to be before they changed. When I was a child, I remember you got a really good chunk of chocolate on there. <laughs> uh, Jackie Adams is laughing that, that you might uh, keep the chocolate in there. <laughs> are you saying that you're going to put it in a spoon? <laughs> you're just going to get a spoon, are you, and just spoon the rest of it? Yeah, everybody's, yeah. everybody's agreeing with me. <laughs> so chocolate doesn't keep, does it not, to you lot? No, chocolate it won't keep. Like that, it's great because I mean, anything that's left over, we just keep and we just use it on baking yeah. again because it's absolutely great. It just came, comes out of the plastic bowl really easily and just goes into a Ziploc bag. And I've just got some white and I've got some milk chocolate. I still do have some chocolate handbag left. You do? Yeah. Well, I am very surprised at that. Where's my, uh, there it is. I'm very surprised at that, Simon. I didn't know you'd have some chocolate handbag, but I mean, it was very, um, it was rich, it was wasn't big, it? It was big, it was quite yeah. thick, wasn't it? It was rich. I was saving it for, to make something with, but I don't know that's going to happen. No, he hasn't really melted it to use it. He's just chunk. He's just baking off chunks to. to um... I, I, well, after last night, I thought I might have a go at ganashing. You did. Yeah. And what are you going to ganache? Are you going to ganache a cake, or just going to make a ganache <laughs> and eat it? Just going to ganache a spoon. <laughs> I must admit, I did like Sicily's one with the Baileys. I thought that looked really good with the strawberries and cream Baileys. You just want to ganache a spoon now, do you, Salmon? Right. I don't know. What are we going to do with him, ladies? Make him do the whole 12 month calendar. Here we go, that's just getting. See, if you just leave a few carrots in there hard, it is nice. So, there was a question about the vegan credibility of Oreos. They are definitely vegan. Definitely vegan. Definitely yes. vegan. Yeah, I'm, yeah, absolutely. Getting chocolate everywhere. How's it? Oh, that, that's actually empty. That one with either. All I'm doing is I'm just giving it a really good stir. Mm -hmm. Just getting those hard bits of the uh, calabal there. Because the chocolate's nice and warm, it melts down. I don't want it to be overburnt in the microwave, so I just like to keep stirring. And this is known as tempering as well. If you just keep, don't melt it fully, and then just keep giving it a really good stir. And you just paddling it around so that all the chocolate melts. So we've got a nice smooth glossy. I only want a little I only want a little bit to go on top of that chocolate so what I'm gonna do is yeah, actually what are you gonna do with the rest of it? Oh the, I need it for the chocolate cups. Okay. Yeah, so I need it for the chocolate. So I'm just going to spoon some chocolate over that one there. That's why I made that, because I need to put it on the chocolate cups. So you're making sure that all your Oreo is covered. But you also want to make sure that they are nice and flat. Put that on top of that. So you just give it a, a bit of a whittle. There you go, shake that. And I'm gonna pop that into the fridge now and I'm hoping by the end of the show, these are solid enough to take out and show you how they look. So I'm gonna get the cups out again now because they're ready to coat in the second time. So as you can see, they're nice and dull inside. That's not hot now, so I can put that on the board. And I'm actually, rather than, I'm not piping now, what I'm going to do now is I'm just actually going to use, using the same paintbrush, because it hardened up the chocolate, just putting the nice warm chocolate and it just melts the paintbrush bristles again. 
and then we're just going to let me bring that down there for you like that can you see that all right that yeah i'm just going to give that to this one if you like that's better for just going to give that a nice is that better yeah a nice just a nice comb but i don't want it too thick but i want to make sure it's all coated up to the edges so it is only another thing it is only another thin coat but you're just making sure that any sneaky any sneaky gaps or thin chocolate has been covered and again this won't take too long to set in the fridge so while that's setting i'll get the caramel into my piping bag to pipe into it and i'll get the other chocolate into my piping bag so that i'm ready to work uh, what i will have to do with this caramel once it's gone into the cups i'll have to bob it in the freezer for about 10 minutes if it's too liquidy the chocolate when you put the lid on it just um it'll seep straight through the caramel so you need to pop you need to bob this into the freezer so the caramel firms up quite solid so you can get the lid on it and then once they're out at room temperature again or in the fridge you get that lovely gooey caramel again Because they come out the freezer cold with the with the caramel um, nice and well, it's not it's not set solid, but it's nice and firm. The when you put the lid on, the lid on the uh, chocolates, they firm up quite quickly, and they'll they'll be ready within well sort of five minutes. I just want to show you a couple lustered, and then we can leave some plain, and they look great in the boxes. It depends on how you want to do them. So here we go. So you can just store your chocolates as the other chocolates, can't you? In yes. a box in the cupboard. Yes. A cardboard box best, isn't it? It or is. A plastic box, does it not matter? No, a, a cardboard box. What actually, what I do <coughs> with these chocolates, what I would do with the chocolates, I put them in a, I put them in a container. I'd actually leave the chocolates in the fridge. Right. Because it's got the it's got the caramel in it as well. It's got the coconut milk. I actually would leave these in the fridge but they store for over they can store up to a week in the fridge if anyone's going to leave them in the fridge for a week as you can see that's nearly started setting already so i'll put those in just in the uh, in the in the fridge just for two or three minutes with bob apparently sorry you put them in the freezer with bob with bob no i'm gonna i'm gonna bob them in the freezer in a minute so while they're doing that i'm just going to show you i've got my bowl now that had the caramel in it there we go the caramel has cooled down in the pan, so I'm just going to pour that into the bowl. And I'm going to leave that to cool down completely before putting it into the fridge for 24 hours. Are we going to have a Blue Peter moment? We've got the Blue Peter moment, we've just filled the, we've filled the, the, the slab and I've got the other one there. So I'm going to leave that there. So that's the caramel, which I'll leave on the side now to cool. As you can tell, it's cooled down. It's already started going thicker. It's got a wobble to it now. So I leave that for 24 hours, and it turns out like that. Yeah, when you made earlier. <laughs> so I'll leave that. Just going to rinse my cloth out. It's full of chocolate. Surprise, surprise. So we we'll just clean down there. So all the calibo is back on the website for sale. We've got them in one kilo bags and we have them in the 2.5 kilo bags. And it is absolutely great. You've got the dark one, which is suitable for vegans, which is the uh, 811. We do the milk chocolate and we also do the white chocolate and we have ruby in as well and gold. In fact, we've got loads. The crisp pearls that I used on the chocolate slab are these ones. It's the Calibo crisp pearls and you can use them for 
any you can put them in desserts you can put them on top of cheesecakes you can put them on top of your um on top of your butter icing when you put your buttercream on your cakes you can put some of those on you can put them like i have just done on the um the chocolate slab you can even put them in mousse you they're so, they're so versatile and we do those in um salted caramel i think we have some white ones and we have some milk chocolate ones uh have a look on the website they're really good they come in it's um a 1.7 pound one which is like 800 800 grams but with them being so tiny and like there's absolutely loads in there and they'll last you for ages and it has a it, as a, just put those it has a resealable top, there you go, resealable top, and you can hear that crunch across there, Ziploc bag, just put them in your cupboard, let's put those ones over there. And they'll last for last. two weeks or something, will they? Well, they all go? They might last about a, a, a few days in Simon's case. Alright, I'm just going to get my, I'm just going to prepare my caramel and pour some into... A pipe. I found it was easier with the chocolate shells being so small it was easier piping it into it rather than trying to do it with a spoon but by all means if you've got little spoons and, you, and, and you've got very steady hands where I haven't I've got the caramel smooth down there so Leslie Irving is asking about the vegan calibre yeah so it's only the dark chocolates that Yes, vegan. yes. It's the dark 811, or you have the dark, is it 70, 30, 38? The really dark. The really dark one. They're both vegan. The milk chocolate, obviously, is not because it has the milk in it, and also the white chocolate is uh, milk as well. So there's only the dark chocolate. And I must what admit. About the caramel one, is that, that got milk? I think in that's, it got, well? that's got milk in it as well. Um, but this, this, the Calibo dark chocolate is so much. I, I find it so much more tastier than um, going by in your ordinary vegan block of dark chocolate. I don't. I find that quite bitter. Whereas the Calibo, with it being the Belgium chocolate, it's absolutely beautiful. And again, it it will last you. You don't need that much. And I, you've seen. I've still got loads left. I've got chocolate there, and I've made two lots of slabs. I've done loads of chocolates. And I've also done two lots of um, unicorn biscuits at the moment. And I've still got loads left. So it does last you. My caramel is in there all nice waiting. These have firmed up beautifully. If you can see from the top there. They've, they've all gone like a matte colour so you can tell they've all firmed up I'm just going to snip the top of the bag off and then fill I would just over three quarters you want to leave a gap that you can fit some dark chocolate on like if you can see that oops, see that gap there on that I don't know oh, looking. on this first one here it must be about, would you say five mils, Simon, that I've left from the top. Mm. If I just show you that underneath there, can, your expert you eye, the first one there, I'm showing you. You can't see it. No, I'm showing you. Oh, you're showing me. Yeah, would you yeah, say that was five mil? Me... <laughs> that first one there. Yeah, five or six mil. About five or six mil. It just, he's so better at measurements than me. But I would say, if you leave about five mil from the top, you've got a nice base then for your uh, bottom, for your chocolate to, to go on. So then no, no caramel's going to seep out. Yeah, I think four, four, four or five would be okay. You don't, yeah. need to go, you don't need to go to six. Sorry, Karen. No, you're all right. You're, you're fine. See, this caramel sauce that I've used, I've uh, made one batch with you, and I made a batch yesterday which I've, I've used like three quarters of it. So it will make this, um, 
18 chocolates in this tray so that batch of caramel would it would make a good 50 chocolates that one batch of caramel so if you wanted to you could halve it and just make a few a few less just do a bit of half batch of caramel or you can make and it will keep through if you put it in a, a jar with a lid on or a sealed container it will last for a week in your fridge so you could make some someday and then some another day if you wanted to Um, yeah, we've got a question about the crisp pearls. Yeah. Being vegan. Oh. Do you know what? I never yeah. even... No, I never even... Don't put crisp pearls on. Sorry, How, guys. What, an, uh, what a schoolgirl error. It's because I went in the cupboard and thought, oh, God, they look good. Because it, it, it said salted caramel. What a schoolgirl error. Please don't use crisp pearls. Oh, I feel so daft. <gasps> Thank you, um... Who was it? Who, who very kindly helped me there? Shana Easy. Thank you. Thank you for making Karen look that. No, it's not. Thank you for, for correcting Thank me. You for correct, Thank you for correcting me. Thank you. Out, so. Yeah. What I would put on there then, on the on there, I would actually go and get the vegan marshmallows because they do some vegan mini marshmallows and I would actually put vegan mini marshmallows on. And apparently Aldi have got some in the special buys at the moment with vegan mini marshmallows. Where's my... So were none of the um, crisp pearls, is there not a dark chocolate one? There is. I th Maybe there is. that would be okay. Yes. But these ones... Oh, they're all falling out. There's a hole in the bag. Did oh. you know that? No, I didn't. Not the one, not just the one in the top. <laughs> the one Right, I've just got some chocolate in there. I'm just going to throw, um, I'm going to pop these just into the fridge. You can tell it's take, it's turned colour now because the chocolate was so cold that it's uh, starting to set the caramel already. So that a couple of minutes in the freezer is going to be it's cold enough then to put the um, the chocolate on top. And while I'm there, I'll get the slab out of the fridge. We do have lots of sprinkles at vegan, don't oh, we? Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. All our sprinklicious range is vegan. All our lovely sprinklicious. Two on there. We've got loads of all the different ones. Uh, there. If you've got the Halloween one, you could go. Let's get you go Halloweeny. Just going to show you this. And how it's set, and that's how thin. That's how thin it is. Uh, if you could hold it down lower, and then we could. Yeah, that's how thin it is, like that. that. Look uh, at we've that. We've got a bit of a lip to make it look thicker. Hold that bit there. Is that better? Yeah, so you can see that. <laughs> so, yeah. so the chocolate itself is about. Four or five mil, Yeah, it? I'm just going to cut a little piece off here. Yeah, that be... That's going onto the greaseproof paper, not onto the board. <laughs> yeah, that's a well known knife proof material. Absolutely. Gre it's, it's not paper. cut through the greaseproof, you see, so look at that. I'll put that on It'll there. Be on the overhead. So we've got a lovely caramel in the see the crunchy head was a it was a chocolate, but it's also crunching through the pretzel. So that is a delicious salted caramel flavoured slab. Which for photo purposes I will do again and I'm going to put sprinkles on. So we'll be making another one and I will be putting sprinkles on it so that it's completely vegan and that will be the picture that'll be on our website. So yes, Margaret, the recipe is on the website, and you, of course, like every demonstration, you can watch it again. Absolutely. Anytime at your leisure. So we'll put those there. There we go. Right, I'm going to look at the chocolates in the fridge. The not the chocolate, the uh, unicorns. Um. Well, they're setting nicely. Have we got prizes to give out today? Oh, 
Carol's not left me the list. Unless uh, you could message her, please, Simon. Uh, and then she I can, shall. Um, I'll, put, I'll just remind people to like and yeah, share, to enter like our him. prize door whenever that might be. I shall just check. So I'll just go into one. <laughs> yeah, please like and share, like and share. So this chocolate is still nice and melted in the bag. going to snip the top off a little bit because I don't want to just come out too fast and I'm just going to gently just coat the top and the chocolate so the caramel it could have just been a, a little bit longer but it's fine it's not sinking into the caramel that's doing absolutely fine and I'm going to give them a bit of a a bit of a shake just to get that chocolate yeah I'll do that in two ticks here we go so I'll give these a bit of a shake so then the chocolate will smooth all over the top here we go. You don't want it to be too thick, but you do want it to cover nice so all the caramel is sealed inside. So I'm just rushing these a little bit. I could have done with leaving them in the freezer a bit longer, but I do want you to see them finished, you see. So. That's got a bit of caramel on it. There we go. It's easy. It's because they've been in the freezer. The setting. The setting okay. really quick. Mm, too fast, mate. Too fast. But you know what? Maybe you just have to pour it, and then you can't do them all at once. No, never mind. It's um, it will work. Because all you have to do is get a really hot knife. Oh, carrot. It's not. I'm going to get a really hot knife and go across it. So. You forget how cold. So if you just got a bowl of boiling water. Boil a bowl of boiling water. I'm going to get a bowl anyway. You go and we'll put, we'll put the kettle on. We'll have yeah. a brew. <laughs> and a nice, byproduct to that will be some boiling water. A nice bowl of boiling water. I'm going to get a nice knife, and I'm just going to show you how to really pretty the bottoms up of the chocolate. Because I just want to make sure that all that gorgeous caramel is just sealed off inside. when you turn them the other way up you're going to just find that the caramel is going to seep out there we are. I can hear the kettle going now which is great so I'll get my small palette knife as well just straightening it off like that because then I can just put a bit more melted chocolate in the gap where I can see the gap and then I can just use a palette knife just to smooth over it and then that'll smooth the bottom out really lovely When you bring them out, and there we go. Just put that over 
there like that. And if you could put the hot water in that for me please, Simon. I shall do that. Thank you very much, that's melted nicely now. I'm going to do the knife first and then I'm going to do the small palette knife and then just fill it, just fill the little gaps in there with chocolate. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. So a nice warm palette knife. Quick wipe with that and then... it nice I'm just gonna put in a little bit see that I know that the chocolate's all sealed there that's fine um so you'd recommend letting them be at room temperature before putting no. them up would you no I would recommend letting your caramel set harder right. I didn't let the caramel set up because I wanted to show you them I didn't let the caramel set as hard as what it should do right so I would set the caramel harder and then you can uh, then it's the chocolate's not going into the caramel it's going straight on top of the set caramel because then the caramel will go back to room temperature once you've um, put them in once you've sealed them you can put them straight into the fridge and they'll be back at room temperature then but you really do need to let the caramel freeze up so it's a nice hard base for the melted chocolate to go on to freezer temperature what the caramel yeah, yeah at first to put yeah Otherwise, if you have it at room temperature, your caramel is very, very soft. Your chocolate sinks into the caramel. All it right. doesn't It doesn't go on the top. So you need it at freezer temperature, but you need your chocolate hotter? Or no. What, so how would you get this to, to, to not, not set? What it was, I don't usually put that much chocolate at the bottom, but it was starting to sink into the caramel. And right. if the caramel was nice and soft, it would have gone on the top and just All been right. there. It, 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 would, it, it, it Yeah. Right. But the caramel wasn't, the caramel was, uh, was a little bit too soft and the chocolate just started to go into the caramel so I piped a little bit more on to try and come, so I didn't want it all to sink. There we go. I know that the, the edges are sealed there because it, it, it was quite... The edges were quite nice and uh, piped up there, so I've got no caramel coming through. Just a case of just melting the top of your, your block bit there and just getting it to go just to the edge like that. So then you've, you've completely sealed it then. I'm just going to pop that those are nearly set again now so within a couple of minutes they're going to be set enough to take out this one there we go so all the edges are sealed there that there's no caramel seeping out there I can see there's no caramel into the fridge for a moment. Get the unicorns out. Now another thing I do suggest that when you're taking chocolates out of the mould, because you don't want to get any fingerprints onto them, I've uh, invested in a couple of pairs of cotton gloves make sure that's nice and wiped and it's nice and dry here we go 
You're saying you're using cotton gloves rather than like nitrile gloves. Or no, latex. nitrile gloves still. Nitrile gloves still will leave um, a mark well, on the. Yeah, I tried them. Um, I did them last week, and they still left a fingerprint onto the chocolate. Whereas cotton gloves and chocolatiers wear cotton gloves as well. So you pull those over there. You can see already. I'm just pressing the top of the unicorn. How easy do they come out of there? And because you've got your gloves on, they are nice and shiny. You're not getting, you see that, you're not getting any fingerprints over them. So then you could dust them if you wanted to, or you could leave them like that. So you have the unicorn, if you can just see there with the unicorn. Don't know if you can. Yeah, we can see them. Can you see the unicorn? It's lovely, yeah. isn't it? And inside that, Where's my little board gone? My little chopping board. And I'll just chop you one of these. And these have just been in the fridge, these ones, to set. So inside, there you've got your chocolate and your Oreo cookie. So you wouldn't be chopping them in half to serve. You'd be giving them a full one. That's what you see, so you can see the inside. You've got chocolate, Oreo and then chocolate. How good do they look? So I can leave that. That's a, that a, looks like it could be another Simon biscuit. No. No? No, it's got biscuit in it. <laughs> and Helen said you could paint the unicorn. Yes, we could. could. We could paint them. You or could, you could have piped in white chocolate at the beginning. No, you can't. Not to make it vegan. Not to make it vegan, no. But you can. You can either mustard dust the unicorn if you wanted to, or you could paint the unicorn very carefully. You could paint the unicorn, or you could paint it all gold if you wanted to, or any colour that you wanted. It's absolutely your choice. No, Claire, they're not heat proof gloves, they're just basic cotton gloves. Yeah, so I've just got one out now. Uh, they're nearly set, I'm going to bring them all out. But again, if you use the cotton gloves, it means that you're not getting anything, no marks over. And then I've got that out, a piece of tissue paper. I'm going to get a couple more out for you as well because they're, they're practically set now. And then if you wanted to mustard dust them up, you just want a nice, a nice brush. So ours are well used in this kitchen. And I've got a gorgeous, the fake Cahill copper colour here. Uh -huh. These are vegan, aren't, aren't they? Yeah, dust are vegan, yeah. Um, all the colours are the same, are they? There's no... No. No. They are... Well, all colours, are, they're all vegan. all vegan. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're all colour. Colour splash, um, fake Cahill, rainbow dust... So you just want to bash it against there. And if you just put your little, if you have your glove on and you're just using your fingertip, as you can tell, you're not getting any fingerprints over your chocolate. And you're just dusting it up and as someone else said, it's looking like a nice coffee capsule, this, uh, this design. And these are 100% biodegradable, aren't they? What, those, absolutely. So not, 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 none of this goes to waste. Oh, no, no. Every single bit of that will be consumed. <laughs> Every bit consumed. Do we have the books on the website? No, we don't. I just got the game. I got them when I got my moulds. I just want to get them out of here carefully. They just peel out of the mould. As you can tell, even though I, uh, I've tidied the bottoms up, they're still sitting pretty on the paper. And will the colour splash work the same? I will get one out for you if you want me to, that's no problem. This is just a couple here that just quite aren't set on the bottom. They're nearly there. That's where they are.
So I've got a colour splash from here. I mean, I've got loads of fake kale. I've got pistachio. I've got galaxy white. I've got the merlots in it. I'm going to show you a nice merlot one. I'll show you the black one. The black one looked amazing. And then let's get a colour splash silver out. And we'll get a colour splash rich gold out. Another piece of tissue. Here we go. Got another brush so I'm going to use the color splash rich gold there we go. see how nice that colors remember this chocolate is really dark so it's only going to give a she it's going to give a sheen a through the dust no that looks really cold that is um that is lovely so we've got a nice gold one there and then i will try um give that let's try a silver one should you go a bit more to your left yeah of course cool. so i'll look like that right there And then I will try this silver one. Well, that gives a lovely sheen as well. So. so there we go. We've got the sheen on that one. So that was a that's the colour splash works as good. I'm going to do a, a lovely Merlot one now. I'm going to leave some plain because some people just like them to see them plain as well. Oops, a daisy. I'll do a couple of Merlot because I've got some too bit too much dust yeah, on you there. Can use a, you can just dip your brush in all that yeah. dust that's on the yeah. tissue and then you, you're not wasting any. Absolutely, there we go. And you could have a multi, multi mix one. No. <laughs> That's better gold in there as well. It's on the top. There you go. So, so they do colour up nice. These could have done with probably been in the fridge a little bit longer. I just think they've got a nice shine to them. Um, Geraldine says, can you show the sugar flare label? But you're using colour splash, aren't you? Or yeah, this is you? this is colour splash that I'm using there and fake hay hill. Right. So we don't have we haven't got colour. I haven't got the, the sugar flare is paint. Right. And I'm not painting them, I'm luster dusting them. So the silver dust is colour splash. Yes. And not sugar flare. No, it's colour splash. Yeah. There was some confusion oh, in, right. the, in the yeah. comments. Yeah, no. Um, you've gone off the edge. I've got, I'm, I'm, I'm back, I'm, I'm back on the edge. And let's just do a black one for you and show you a nice black one. Let's clean the brush off and then some bit of black onto there. And you you're not going to really see that. No, but you get a lovely, you get a lovely shine to it. You get, a, it's the graphite black right. and you get a lovely shine to it. So the sugar flare chocolate paint, I'm not sure that's vegan, is it? It's got cocoa butter in it, but I, um, I'd i have to find out for you on that. I'll get one out now, see if we can see it on it. So it just gives it a nice, um, a nice sheen. Put that on there for you. Let me get the paint out just so I can just see the paint for you. Just get one pot out. Grab one for me to look at. Well, yeah, absolutely. Can... It might be that some are vegan, some aren't. Just always make sure your lids have gone back on. Suitable for vegans, this one. Brilliant. That must be. Maybe uh, you just look at a couple more colours there. So that's the orange one that says it's suitable for vegans. So.
But did you see it at the bottom of it? No, it's right in the middle. Right in the middle. Right in the middle, in the, next to the GM freeze. Second line down. Yeah. Suitable for vegans. So sugar flare. Looking at all the colours, it says yeah. it on that one as well, it's suitable for vegans, so you could paint with the colour flare paint if you wanted to as well. Um, I don't know, you see you have to, you have to warm sugar flare up in the microwave, and then you just use your paintbrush, and then once you've used it from the pot, you just let it set again, and then you can put it back in your cupboard, and you can use it time and time again. It has a really good date on it. I'm going to leave those few uncovered. Um, I just want to get a little... Well, I'll tell you what, let's get one of these little... This little board I can't get around there, so I've got um, some lovely... So, Tricia is asking which paint do I use on white sugar paste? So there's quite a lot you could use on that, isn't there? Yeah, on white sugar paste, if you wanted to, you could actually, you could, I know if you're looking, thinking Tracy Van, Tracy Van use a lot of, uses a lot of cocoa butter paint, so she actually paints on sugar paste with the sugar flare paints as well, because it's cocoa if you're doing the fancy painting. If you just was painting on the sugar paste, say to um, paint some of, uh, if you've done it in a mould and you wanted to t take out some definition pieces, you can colour any um, gel, uh, any of the uh, dust up with some rejuvenator or dipping solution. And you can paint with that. But if you actually want to paint with cocoa butter, then the sugar flare ones at three ninety nine a tub are really good for painting on fondant or painting on chocolate. So, are the sugar flare chocolate paints only usable on white chocolate? You could. They're great for colouring your white chocolate up. You can paint with them, uh, but. I saw Ollie on one of his courses it and didn't it, it, well, it didn't it? cover very well on the dark chocolate uh, but they were great for colouring your white chocolate because I did some Karen Davis uh, chocolate in moulds, I did the white chocolate and I coloured it all, I coloured the chocolate and I was uh, piping in like bits of green chocolate and bits of orange and bits of, of red chocolate and it worked really really well. Yeah I mean you might be better to colour white chocolate with the paints first but then it won't be vegan no but i'm just thinking now i'm just going to get i'll tell you what i'll do i'll just get see what i've got in this color here i've got a silver i'm just going to heat this up in the microwave and let's see what it looks like because they see it's very very you see that yeah give us a silver very unicorn. solid give us a silver unicorn Karen. silver unicorn what you like go on you can do that absolutely sure get myself a thin a thin paintbrush out then, like super thin. Remember this time, remember it melts from the middle in the microwave, so don't bash the top because it comes out all over so your pinning. you've got to keep stirring it to make sure you, you get in the... <laughs> oh, don't you just? Because I, uh, I did the mistake, didn't I, with the red one the other day, when I was on that live, and I just I plopped the top, didn't realise, and the paint just flew out and flew out all over my pinny, but it's not gone on this pinny. Are you okay to put those little tubs in, into hot water to warm them up, if you haven't got a microwave? I don't know if the water would be hot enough. I honestly don't know. It's something you would have to try, because on the instructions it says microwave. Yeah. So it's something, maybe if you had a little, I don't, if you had a little like, like bain-marie. Yeah. Like a bain-marie. Yeah. yeah. Um, so which silver colour did you use for the dust? For the dust, I used colour splash. Could you show that? Yes, certainly. For the silver one, I used the uh, the colour splash. Show it on the overhead there. Silver. Yeah. Just plain silver. Just plain pearl dusting colour. So it's the pearl one that I used. Plain old ordinary silver. It's getting there. It's just I'm just being really careful because people yeah. who saw my live last week saw the accident. I missed it. You missed it. You would have laughed. You would have laughed. And I was no opinion of me. I was Karen. hoping people hadn't seen it and you all saw it. And you all saw me frantically with a with a with a, a dishcloth trying to wipe down luckily a black pinny full of red paint. You just got to be really careful because it melts from the inside outwards. Yeah, that's getting 
nice and soft there. So I just want to do it a little bit more because I can stick the palette knife all the way in now. So I'm just loosening the particles. Weren't you in danger there of doing what you did? No, because no, because I went in the centre. I went. I didn't go at the edge. I was really, believe you me, I was being really careful there. And stood to one side. Did you not notice? <laughs> <laughs> So it is only doing it on, I'm only doing it on the short 30 seconds glass and I'm going to take this out to 15 seconds now because I don't want it to, um, I, mean, I don't know if you can over melt it but I'm just being really careful. Remember it'd be hot as well. Yeah, you don't want it too hot. You don't want it too hot, you don't want it, you don't want it to burn you yourself either. You don't want it to, either. or melt the, um, no, but you melt don't, the you chocolate don't want it. too much. You don't want to lose your definition of a unicorn. I don't think, I see, with this one, I don't think this one's been used before, you see, this silver one. The red one had been used. Ollie had used, Ollie had used the red one. Nikki says, watch the apron. I am watching the apron, Nikki. I, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to be like you. Don't get in the way of it. There we go. That's, it. That's starting to, yeah. So you can see it's starting to really... Can't see anything. Well, at the moment it looks like there's only bits, but it's really melting down that now. It's just starting to go really liquefied at the bottom so we're just going to give it another another blast but that's the that's the joy of doing it in these tubs but it's very important that you do it a little bit at a time yeah don't, don't put don't, it on for a couple of don't minutes don't think oh it's going to take it's going to take a minute i might as well put it no. on for a minute no just just keep testing it i know it's tedious and you keep in testing it but it's better than just doing it too much because there's nothing worse if you've got some really hot paint like that and you, and you spilt it on yourself you cause yourself an accident mm -hmm. as well So you are, you are doing it on full power, aren't you? Yeah. Yes, I am. There. Can you see that, Simon? Yeah. There you go. So it started to, it's, you see that's what I mean about it? It's melting good. from the bottom. So that's completely usable now. That is, I'm just going to give it a good stir round. And you keep it in the tub because then once it sets in the tub again, you just keep it there, just put it back in your cupboard. And you can just keep warming up. Absolutely. Push. As you need it, yes. So you can tell because it's going loose, that that's how warm it was as well. Um, it's like tempering it down really now because I'm uh, making sure that the little, the little bits are all melting. That, that'll be cooling, the, cooling it down rather than using like the molten red hot silver. Right, that's going to be lovely now. So you can colour your white chocolate straight away with this. Um, and then this is the this is the silver one. Let's just paint a unicorn. For, so what are you unicorn painting? Me. Was it you, was it? Yeah. Right. We want to see your, your painting skills. They're not very good. They're not as good as Carol's. So let's get a very, let's get a fine brush. Just dipping it into. So is it covering okay? It is covering fine. It's all been silver. I'm 
not breathing while I'm doing this. <laughs> you got your tongue out. Oh, you can see your head. Oh, sorry. There we go. It's going to go around that bit like that. So I could, I've, really, I've just picked out the top of the unicorn there just to show you that the sugar flare. Sugar flare paint works lovely on the dark chocolate. Put that to one side. Put the lid on because I want to spill that over. Just let me um, let me make a, an adjustment and I'll yeah. zoom right into that, shall I? Just stick it there. There we go. I've gone that way. There we go. So the sugar flare, the, the paint will cover over dark chocolate. So we have loads of different colours. We've, we've got yellows and oranges and greens and reds and blues and uh, violet colours uh, and, and, and white. So look into the sugar flare paint because it just it covers lovely over over dark chocolate. Every, everybody's taking a big sigh, a big breath after you've been <laughs> holding it while you're painting. <laughs> so thank you. I hope you have enjoyed that. I will do another I am going to make so uh, with that caramel so this is a good question from Lynn yeah. Woodward um, would it work if you painted the bottom of the model before you put it put the chocolate in could you do it that way round I've not tried it I don't know I wouldn't because the paint it probably wouldn't come out the it would the the uh, you need your chocolate really nice and smooth to come out of these molds and if you just put the silver in the bottom there it probably wouldn't come out on top well, of the I think, chocolate I think it might no, I'm not. Yeah, I would. I would experiment. I can experiment show. with that, but I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't like to say that We've because got a bit of silver paint still. <laughs> we'll, we'll do that and then report back, won't we? Yeah, because I, I wouldn't like to. I wouldn't like to definitely say that because I have an idea that the cho the, the paint might stick to the bottom of the mold and not come out with the chocolate. Well, so, thank you so much. Like and share. Absolutely. Yeah, please and like and the, share. And there's the winners. Oh, good grief! I have some winners. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Friday the 16th of October, when I did the vegan tiffin, which is now on the website. Well done, Amy Smith. You have won... Um, sorry, you have... Uh, I'm not too sure. There's no, there's no prizes on there. Um, well, last time... It was £25. It was pound. all £25, pounds, right. so... Right, I'm going to have to, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to say that. Um... Yeah, that's... Like it. and share on the 14th, because that's the... Right, I'm, yeah, so on the, um, the 16th of October, well done, Amy Smith. You have won for liking and sharing the vegan tiffin. Uh, it's, um... I'm going to tell you all how to claim your prize since I've done all the prize winners. On the 19th of October, which was Jerry's class at the night time, Jerry Chu, well done, Shay Jake. So well done, Shay. You've won the voucher as well. And for Sicily's last night, the 22nd of October, with that gorgeous Halloween cake that she did, was it, was it, wasn't it monstrous? Um, Lynn Bond, well done, Lynn Bond. Um... For the like and share competition that was to win seven bags of the flavoured icing sugar, the new winter flavours, that winner is Marie Deville Harrop. So well done. So that was for the like and share competition on the 14th for seven bags of flavoured icing sugar. And then the Great British Bake Off winner for the £25 voucher for All About Chocolate, Trudy Gilbert. Well done. You've won that one. All you winners, all you need to go is... Do you want to flash them names up, do you think? Can we do that? Well, I'll, I'll repeat them again. Um, if you just push them up, I can... I can just do that. Boop. Boop. Pop it down. It's fine. So all you need to go is you need to go to info.sugarandcrumbs at icloud.com and say your name is for some uh, Amy. If you say that my name's Amy, I've won the um, like and share competition for Karen's vegan tiffin on the sixteenth of October. You've won the twenty-five pound voucher, and they will tell you in the office how to go around claiming it. Again, Shay, 
just go to info.sugarandcrumbs at icloud.com and just leave them a, a lovely email message. Lynn Bond for the 22nd of October, Marie Deville Harrop for the 14th of October and Trudy Gilbert for the Great British Bake Off winner All About Chocolate. So well done winners, super. So please don't forget to like and share today's competition, today's um, demonstration and that will be drawn out next Friday as well as when we've got Ollie in on Monday uh, that's all day we've got Ollie Monday and then Ollie's doing a lovely um, demonstration he's doing a lovely live on Monday night for you as well Tuesday you've got me at half past 11 and then you've got Carol in the private buttercream flowers class at two o'clock so looking forward to that Wednesday you've got me at half 11 again Thursday you've got Tracy Mann at half 11 and then Friday you've got me again on Vegan Friday so thank you so much for joining in today and I hope you like what you've seen and I want to see you getting baking and get creating and we'll be sure to like everything on Facebook that you're doing so thank you Simon thank you Karen thank you thank and you everyone for joining us absolutely I hope you've all had a wonderful day and thank you for all the lovely comments and Absolutely everything. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll see you all on Monday.